Alright guys, I have a very, very interesting video for you guys today. There's not a lot going on in the short range of things, so I'm going to be talking a little bit long range or upcoming pattern that's possible, and also it's going to be a little bit of an educational video as well, so there's a lot of interesting things in this video. Now before I get started with this video though, I would ask that you do subscribe if you do like weather related content, and also make sure to share this video with your friends and family if they enjoy weather related content as well. Let's get right into things. So we're going to go back. The main point of this video is talking about nor'easters and how we have been dealing with a lot of potential nor'easters that don't live up to their potential. So I'm going to be talking a lot about that and then the type of pattern that it would take for the nor'easters to actually become full-blown nor'easters. So first off, this was back in October. I published a video talking about the potential storm tracks during the winter time, and I'm going to show you three different storm tracks that are very similar. And this first one is the Appalachian Runner, and this one is basically a nor'easter that is over the mainland. And it's not even considered a nor'easter, but it is very close to being a nor'easter. If it was a little bit offshore, it would literally be a nor'easter. Now, our second one is a Miller B nor'easter. And this storm starts out, actually, in the Midwest and makes its way all the way down into the mid-Atlantic states and then moves offshore and then becomes a nor'easter there for the northeastern United States. And then our classic Miller A nor'easter is one that starts in the Gulf, works its way up into the northeastern United States, and then becomes a nor'easter for New England, and these are typically the most major out of all three of these. So obviously, we haven't seen a lot of any of these three, but uh, the potential has been there. It's just they haven't lived up to their potential. So we're going to talk more about that during this video. Now, we're about to move on and start talking about the more technical terms for what a nor'easter actually is, because I see a lot of people having different opinions on this, and this is actually the technical definition of what a nor nor'easter is. All right, so as you can see in this graphic, this isn't mine. I don't know what source this is from, actually. But this is actually a Miller B nor'easter, one of the storm tracks I just showed you guys. You can see it comes from the Midwest, works its way down into the Mid-Atlantic, and then moves up into the northeastern United States. But you can see the winds come from the northeastern direction. And this is actually the technical term for a nor'easter, a storm that is offshore that brings winds from the northeast into the northeastern United States. A lot of people think that it's just a storm that's in the northeastern United States or it's moving northeast, but the technical term is that the winds are coming from the northeast from an offshore storm because they move counterclockwise, obviously. So if it's offshore, it would bring winds onshore from the northeast. And here's a satellite image of a nor'easter, which I think is a very beautiful image. It's actually one of my favorites. I've used it in thumbnails before. Very, very beautiful example of a nor'easter. And you can see even the clouds, you can tell the wind is coming from the northeast on shore, and that's what a classic nor'easter is. Now we're about to talk about our current storm that we're having right now for the northeastern United States, which obviously is not a nor'easter, but we're going to talk about how he's actually very close to being a nor'easter and how loosely the term nor'easter can be used. All right, so as you can see here, this was our model run from this morning, and you can see we're expected by Sunday our low pressure system is going to be onshore in Connecticut and Massachusetts, and you can see the direction of the wind is from either the southeast or directly east, never from a northeasterly direction. This is not a nor'easter. This is an onshore storm, almost a nor'easter, but not by definition it's not a nor'easter. But from our model run... Uh, from three days ago, which I forget which day three days ago was, but from three days ago, you can see the winds were coming from the northeast, actually, on shore of Massachusetts and Maine, and this was actually going to be considered a nor'easter. So this was going to be a nor'easter, but since it was on shore, it ended up not having winds coming from the northeast. So what was going to be a nor'easter was not, and that's a missed opportunity for a offshore storm that would have been a nor'easter that ended up trending west, trending west, trending west, and being onshore. All right, so we're going to talk a little bit about how a lot of these potential nor'easters have been completely dying out and never becoming nor'easters. So here's actually today's model run. This is the model run that's coming out right now, and you can see here's a storm in the Gulf, and if you remember the Miller A storm track that I showed in the beginning of the video, they start out in the Gulf and then move up into the northeastern United States, offshore of the eastern United States, and then become a nor'easter. So this is the beginning of what could potentially become a nor'easter. Now let's look at the upper level winds, because that's what's really going to steer this storm. 
And that's where we realize there is actually no potential. If we follow the red colors and those lines with arrows, that's the direction that the storm is going to take. And you can see it's going to head through Florida and then out through the southeastern United States, never even impacting the mid-Atlantic or the northeast. So this will definitely not become a nor'easter. But if those winds steered up the eastern United States offshore, then we would see a nor'easter. So that's the difference there. That's all it takes is the upper level winds heading in the wrong direction completely kills a potential nor'easter. So we're about to show more of these potential chances and kind of show you guys in the upcoming month how some of the models are showing that potentially change where we will have winds moving offshore and potentially bringing these storms up the coast. And that's all it would take to turn these storms that never become a snowstorm into very major snowstorms. Now, obviously, before I get to this next segment of the video, you have to handle this information responsibly. This is getting more and more long range, which is going to become less and less accurate. And this is more of just a model analysis than a forecast and more of an example. I'm just showing you guys of a good setup for a nor'easter. This first one is just going to be another killed potential nor'easter. So this is actually looking at next Wednesday. We had another storm kind of moving in the Gulf. This isn't a sure thing, even though it's never going to become a snowstorm, most likely. Uh, but this is going to be by the morning time, Wednesday, January 29th. And you can see we have a low-pressure system there located off of Louisiana, maybe bringing snow in a southern slider-type scenario, which is really a storm that moves just from west to east in the southeast. And if there's enough cold kind of for Tennessee, Kentucky, Virginia, North Carolina, that could bring snowfall. It's not looking like there will be enough cold, but obviously things can change a little bit. So I'm not going to say for sure this won't be a snowstorm, but that's not what I'm thinking for this one. Looking at the upper air, you can tell it's very flat west to east, not going to move up the eastern United States. So this will not become a nor'easter, almost definitely will not become a nor'easter. The upper level winds is one of the things that the models do typically handle pretty well far out. So we can tell this one is most likely going to move over Florida and Georgia and just out to sea. The only potential for snow would be Tennessee, Kentucky, Virginia maybe, but it's still very, very slim. So I'm not calling for that whatsoever. Now our next chance and we're already 174 hours out so this is becoming long range and this is going to be some I'm going to show now two examples I think of really good chances for potential nor'easters and what would be a good setup in the upper air for nor'easter and just show you what it takes for one of these systems to become a good good chance for snowfall and this storm started out in the gulf and then slowly moved over the southeastern United States offshore and you can see there's a little bit more blue a little bit more snow going up in the northeast and this is february 1st so we're still you know days and days away from this so this could change a lot so don't take this as a forecast take this as a good example of what a good nor'easter setup would look like and here's the upper air look i know it doesn't look perfect and i'm going to show you an example of actually a perfect look in a minute but this is better than the previous ones because we see some movement towards the northeast from the southwest to the northeast and that's going to help pull it a little bit up and at least bring it offshore of the mid-atlantic which is a big step ahead of what our previous storms were having and you can see as i move towards the next day it actually gets a little bit better even uh, with potentially moving towards the northeast even up into new england so this storm as you can see here by Sunday morning, February 2nd, again, very far out. This is eight days out, so don't take this legitimately, but if a storm had this type of upper level wind pattern, we would see this, and it's still well offshore, not the perfect setup. This We would like this storm to be a lot closer to the northeastern United States, but you could still see it's close enough to bring a little bit of snow to New England if we had this setup, and there's certainly enough cold. It's just the storm is well offshore. Uh, now, to show you guys a perfect example of a nor'easter, this is just classic classic stuff right here guys i'm going to show you a perfect setup here in just a second of what i would like to see for a major storm uh think december 2010 if you guys remember that one uh we called it the boxing day blizzard remember that storm this is a similar setup to that so let's take a look at that real quick All right, here it is, and we can see it's starting out in the Gulf. A lot of people, when I say nor'easter starting the out in the Gulf, they're like, no, it doesn't. It certainly does. That's a very classic Miller A setup, starting out in the Gulf, moving over Florida, and then taking a northeastern direction, or almost directly north in some cases, up the east coast, and then eventually winds again, heading from the northeast on to onshore to New England is a very classic nor'easter setup. And this is February 7th, so very, very far out on this one, guys. Very far out. This is not really a legitimate threat at this point 
it's a signal maybe at best, but definitely do not take this as a forecast. This is just an example of a perfect nor'easter. This is 312 hours out. We call this fantasy land because it is practically fantasy. So let's move on a frame, or actually we're going to show you the upper level winds. And this is perfect. This is textbook. You can see the winds head down south through the central United States and then take a curve over the Gulf and then head directly northeast all over the east coast. And you can almost just tell what direction this nor'easter would head in. It's going to take a turn once it reaches over Florida. And look at this next frame, guys. This is a classic example of a very cold nor'easter. And you can tell why I say Boxing Day because the Boxing Day blizzard actually had snow very, very far down south and then headed over the entire eastern United States. So we can see... Uh, snow there for coastal South Carolina, coastal North Carolina, coastal Virginia. We've seen setups like this before, uh, but obviously, again, this is fantasy. Don't take this as a legitimate threat. Uh, and here's that upper level winds after the fact, and you can see almost heading directly north. Very classic. This would bring snow over the entire eastern United States. Classic, classic blizzard look here for the eastern United States. So keep a mental memory of this. This is a good setup, and I'm going to show you a bad setup that we have right now, just so you can see the difference of a perfect nor'easter setup compared to what we have right now. So three, two, one, this is what we have right now, and you can just tell it is just completely night and day. So we have a lot of ground to cover before we'll be in a position to see really good nor'easters, but the good thing is, is the models actually have us as we head into February, potentially seeing a trough in the east and, you know, those winds offshore moving perfectly north. So we would have the potential for future nor'easters coming up. We have those storms developing in the Gulf and we have had those for a couple months now. So that's there. We just need that upper level wind pattern to set up perfectly and then all the ingredients would be there. Anyway, guys, I hope you enjoyed this educational video. Again, be sure to share it with your friends and family and I'll see you guys in the next video.